Well, hello again. And just like that first picture said, Happy New Year. Here we are in 2021. And I'm going to ask, how many days is it, is it till next Christmas? Well, by my reckoning, it's 362 days. That's a long, long time to have to wait, isn't it? It was worse last year because it was a leap year. And at this time, you would have had to have waited 363 days, one extra day. Well, that's a long wait. Now, I've shown you one picture of Happy New Year. But the second picture, I like this picture even more. You see how the person is leaping from 2020 into 2021. That's a bit how it feels at the moment, maybe, that we're leaving a dark 2020 and we're leaping into 2021. And we really don't know what's ahead of us. But do you know what's great about this picture and why I like it? The sun's coming up and a new day is dawning. Now, if you listened or read the words that were in the hymn that we were singing at the beginning of this, you'll know that it's a wonderful thing to think there's a new day dawning and it's another day for us to be able to say to God, thank you for all the good things you've given us and to praise God for all the good things he plans to give us over the next, not just 362 or 363 days, but for the days and the days ahead. We might feel as if we are leaping into the unknown over the next year, but God is there with us every single day. Just like the sun gets up every single day, we can trust God always. And that's why I love that picture, because the sun is shining. It's coming up on a new day. So that is the picture that I would like to remember for this new year. And all that, well, only a little bit of it is about the story. I'm going to show you a picture of a young woman and a man from a long time ago. And I wonder if you know what this picture is. So, this picture is of Mary and Joseph. You see, the Christmas story isn't finished quite yet. Baby Jesus isn't just a couple of days old, but he maybe is about a month and a half old. Still a tiny wee thing, isn't he? And Mary and Joseph had something that they had to do. In those days, when your baby was born, you waited for about a month and a half, and then you took your baby to the temple to be blessed. A little like a baptism that we have, but we have a baptism for a baby at any time. A baby can be a month and a half old, it could be six months old. Do you know, my first son was nearly three when he was baptised. He was baptised at the same time as his little brother, who was only mm, about three months old. So we had two diff very different ages being baptised. So Mary and Joseph are coming into the temple. And if you look at Joseph's hand, he has a gift for the temple in it. He has two beautiful white doves. It was the custom then that you had to bring something as a gift to the temple. And people like Mary and Joseph didn't have a lot of money, so they could only afford to buy two little turtle doves. Lots of people would buy great big things, oh, I don't know, like whole big lambs. But Mary and Joseph weren't chosen by God because they were rich. They were chosen by God because he knew he could trust them to do the right thing. And here they were doing the right thing. They were bringing their baby to the temple to say thank you to God and to ask God to bless the baby. And when they got there, there was an old priest called Simeon. Now we don't know how old Simeon was, but we suspect he was pretty old because Simeon had been waiting and waiting and waiting and trusting God that before he died, he would see the Messiah, the Saviour, the one that God was going to send to save the world. And when he stepped forward and saw the baby that Mary and Joseph brought, 
lifted up his eyes to heaven and he lifted up his voice to praise God, saying, This is what you promised. Do you know what now, God? I don't mind if I don't have very many days left on this earth because you promised me that I would see the Saviour before I died. And he looked at the baby that he was holding in his hands and he said, And this is the Saviour. This child is going to bring the world to the right place. This child is going to be the saviour that God has promised. And then he looked at Mary. And I think maybe he looked a little bit sad because he said to Mary, and you are going to have your heart hurt by what is going to happen to this little baby. And of course we know that Jesus came into the world as a baby, but he had to die for all of us. And Mary was Jesus's mother. That must have hurt her heart so much, even though she knew and trusted God that he had the plan that he had promised, must still have been so hard to watch her lovely son die that way. But she knew, just as Simeon knew, that she could rely on God forever because he was always in charge of everything. And that might be where the story would end. There was the baby Jesus brought into the temple and everybody saw him and everybody heard Simeon praising God and saying, this is the saviour. But there was someone else at the temple and this is the person that it was. This is a very old lady. This is not a glamorous lady. This is a lady called Anna. And the Bible very carefully says that Anna was 84 years old when baby Jesus arrived at the temple being carried by his mother and father. So why is Anna important? Well, Anna had lived in the temple for many, many, many years. She had been married only for seven years and then she was widowed. And from then on, she had stayed in the temple and she had looked after the temple grounds and she had brushed the temple grounds and she had done things round about the temple and she'd never left. And you would think maybe she would be an old woman that people didn't pay much attention to. But Anna was also a prophet. Anna also was given the words from God to tell people prophecies, to tell them things that God needed them to know. And Anna saw Jesus and she too knew exactly who the little baby was. And she was able to tell everyone who came into the temple that she had seen the Messiah, the Saviour. And because she was someone that everyone knew in the temple and everyone knew was a prophet, when she spoke, people listened. They listened really carefully. And all those people in the temple heard that that little baby had arrived was going to save the world. Now they may not have said very much at the time but I think God got a lot of people ready to remember that day. To remember the day that Simeon, the old priest, said that he had waited for ages and ages and ages but he knew that God's promise had come true that day. And they may have re- may remember that Anna, who was 84 years old, lifted up her hands to heaven and praised God for letting her see the saviour of the world. Maybe they didn't think about that for many, many years. Because Jesus grew up very quietly in Nazareth. He probably helped his dad because his dad was a carpenter. And he certainly helped his mum, I'm sure, because he was at home for a long time. There is another story about Jesus when he was a little boy going to another temple. But that's not a story for today. That's maybe a story for, I don't know, next week. I'll make you wait. I won't make you wait 363 days. I'll make you wait seven. That's not quite so long, is it? 
Now, at the end of this talk, we're going to sing Fully Rely on God because it's just a great song, isn't it? Just great fun. Let's see if when you're watching it, you can do the actions. I try and do the actions, I get really mixed up, but I'll bet all of you probably can do the actions. We'll maybe have it for a couple of weeks so that by the end of a couple of weeks, you'll be able to sing it and do the actions. I'll just have to wait and see whether you can. It's all about waiting, isn't it? But the wonderful thing is we never wait on our own and we never wait without knowing that God has a plan for us, whatever it is. We just have to wait and see what it is. So God has a plan for us for the rest of the year. We don't know what it is. Like that man leaping into 2021, we can't see the future. But God can. God knows the future for each one of us. He knows that he has the right plan for each one of us. So we can rely on God for everything. Let's keep that thought for next week. Okay, I'll see you next week. Bye.